الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد و علیہ علیہ وصحب وسلم ام بحبت فلّہ شیخ محمد بن عبد الحاب الوصابی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ رحمۃ واسیہ ہی مینشن دی فورتھ ایڈوائس فار دی اسٹوڈنٹ آف نالج ہی مینشن ہی سیڈ پرسسٹنس اینڈ کانٹینوٹی ان سیکن نالج دیٹ از امپیریٹو دیٹ یو آر پرسسٹنٹ اینڈ کنٹینیوس ان سیکن نالج اینڈ بفور وی گیٹ ان ٹو وٹ دا شیخ سیڈ دس آلسو ریمائنڈس می آف اے فائدہ سیٹنگ وتھ شیخ ابو صلاح الفغانی حفظ اللہ تعالیٰ ون آف آر مشائخ ان کویت آلسو نون از شیخ محمد ہشام الفغانی حفظ اللہ تعالیٰ اینڈ وی ور ایٹ از ہاؤس اینڈ آئی ریکال دیٹ یو نو دیر واز دیٹ مینی آف از فیو ویسٹرن برادرس عبد اللہ لحمامی ان ادرس اینڈ وی ور سیٹنگ اینڈ آئی ریکال دا شیخ ہی مینشن about uh, the importance of this being continuous in Talib al-Ilm. And he mentioned that, he said that when he began seeking knowledge, uh, you know, he had a lot of, uh, you know, his, his, his companions or his colleagues who were seeking knowledge with him as well. And they started, you know, they were seeking with Mashaykh and probably, and then in Jama Salamiyah and so forth. And he said that, He said, now, some of those same brothers, they call him from Kuwait to ask him Masail in questions. And he was doing his PhD at that time. And he, he mentioned that to say that, you know, and the reason was because of the inqita. Inqita fi talib al-ilm. Because of the break or not being consistent in seeking knowledge that they had to stop. Also... And so then, you know, obviously they didn't advance in their knowledge because things in the worldly life or whatever the case may be. And that distracted them from seeking knowledge. So they actually ended up, the sheikh, you know, was raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he was continuous. Uh, another thing, a uh, uh, story I want to relate is also the situation of sheikh uh, when we were in, in Hadramaut with sheikh um, uh, Abdullah al-Mar'i, hafid Allah ta'ala. And we asked him, Uh, about uh, in, uh, something similar to this. And he also mentioned the same thing. He said the inkita. And he related also when he was doing Talib al-Ilm in Damaj, he said that there were some people who were his colleagues at that time, they would memorize 50 hadith a day. I was like, subhanAllah. I mean, I... Anyhow, enough said. 50 hadith a day. But he said, unfortunately, some of those same individuals, they had inkita. They stopped. You know, things in the dunya got caught them up or whatever the case may be and they stopped. So then maybe even they forgot a lot of their knowledge and they, you know, didn't continue to be students of knowledge or whatever. And Alhamdulillah, Allah raised him to be a scholar, him and his brother, Sheikh uh, Abdurrahman Adani, Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasiya. And so this shows us the importance of, of being uh, continuous and seeking knowledge. So Sheikh Wasabi, Wasabi, uh, Rahmatullahi alayhi, he said... Persistence and continuity in seeking knowledge. He says, The most beloved deed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, which, uh, was that which was consistent. Perhaps a student is intellectually bright. However, he abandons acquiring knowledge or becomes bored and is not successful in it. And Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I used to be a poor man and accompany the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on an empty stomach. With that, Abu Huraira became the memorizer of the most hadith from amongst the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. Sufyan ibn A'in accompanied uh, Amr ibn Dinar close to 20 years. And he became the firmest people with him. And Muhammad ibn Jafar Gudar accompanied Shu'bah, 20 years, and his book of hadith became the book to judge by regarding hadith, the hadith of Shu'bah. And that was due to the love of knowledge and desire for it. So it shows that they were consistent. And look how they sacrificed their lives. 
some of us we go away one year six months and then we want to start teaching and we want to start bringing a lot of foa in and stuff like this and so one thing i want to mention uh with that persistence is be persistent in seeking knowledge and it's good to remind people but be careful not to be as the, the scholars mentioned about the uh and i don't i can't think of the the hikmah or the 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 thing that they say in arabic but it's that the grape uh you know it's it's about being the one who's like a grape a similitude between a grape before you become a zabib before you become like a raisin a raisin you know a raisin comes from grapes and it means it's went through a process and now it's ripe it's been through ripeness and then it's went through the process of being a zabib of being a a a um a uh raisin so then that raisin is now ready ready to be eaten so likewise the person who seeks knowledge you want to you know get to a point where you've spent some time you spend some time before you rush to be uh out there in the forefront uh and doing major dawah unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored you like that and you have that knowledge and that hikmah but just be cautious and mindful of that and seek uh, knowledge and be consistent do not stop do not stop you know strive your best to be consistent and this is another advice i want to mention with that and that especially that comes with the arabic language and i found that with myself that i had kethrata and kita i started in yemen actually i started in america i learned how to read and write then i went to yemen then i i you know the first time i only stayed like a year then i went to the emirates for a little bit and then went back to america then i had in kita and i didn't have enough arabic to really benefit from the books i had at the time so then i went alhamdulillah allah favored me to go back to yemen and i increased my knowledge more and i was getting you know in some nice uh grammar books then i left in Keta again you know so i had to keep starting and stopping and starting and stopping and if you don't memorize you really lose so it's very important to be consistent and memorize uh in order to uh, gain a strong foundation in the arabic language and a strong foundation so you can get to the books and benefit from them uh, in a in a more appropriate way the sheikh then mentions says how beautiful is the statement of the one who said my staying up nights to revise the various branches of knowledge is more beloved to me than a wealthy natural beautiful woman and the extended embrace and my uh ecstatic sw swaying from solving a difficult issue is sweeter and more desired than the continuous pourer of alcohol uh and the sound of my pens on paper is sweeter than akramakamala than intercourse and passion and my pecking to remove sand from the papers is more enjoyable than a young girl pecking her drum i spend a whole dark night wide awake and you spend it sleeping and you desire to catch up with me so this was a piece of poetry and we did the best to uh to translate it and so this shows the importance that the one who is you know that for the salaf and the ulama you find throughout time it was more beloved for them those who are sincere it's more beloved for them seeking knowledge than everything else in the dunya oh how beloved it is for the men to have the beautiful righteous wife okay this is a beautiful treat that men love However, what is more beloved to the one who is sincere in seeking knowledge is seeking that knowledge, is going forth in that in that cause, and that is, you know, and so the and and what is delil of that is their being patient and continuous in their seeking uh, of knowledge. Shu'ba ibn al Hajjaj rahimahullah taala said during a talk, "If it is authentic to me, it is more beloved to me than my family, my wealth." my children and all of mankind also one should be far from problems and things that keep you busy from seeking knowledge so this was the advice of shu'ba so this shows us the importance of tafarrag you know having time where you're just seeking knowledge not where you're going and you have to work and you have to do this 
Unfortunately, that's the hal and the condition for many people. But those who are blessed to make tafarag, they need to strive to do so. He also said, so I advise you, O student, to give importance to the books of our early scholars like the six main hadith books, Musnad, Imam Ahmed, and other than them from the books of our scholars, Rahimahumullah. However, this does not mean do not benefit from the latter books of Ahl Sunnah. So we'll stop there uh, and we'll keep this uh, you know, as concise as possible and we'll probably finish it in another couple of sittings. There's still some excellent advices and we'll benefit from this advices from this advice of this uh, Imam of Ahl Sunnah, Allah Yarhamahu, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad.